Thursday. Uh, good morning, Xanax. How are how are you today? Asitsu, good morning. Hello. How are you? Uh, doing good. Excellent. Do you want, do you want this, Sylvie? It's like, not something you really care about. Uh, Zilby's here. Let me see if I can get a good angle on him. I don't know. He's like half standing up. So let's see what this looks like. Uh, it's going to be bright lights. Ever want to give up technology and move to a cabin in the middle of the woods? I mean, it was a, uh, a common joke at a couple places that I worked at that uh, uh, we, would, we would eventually just rage quit technology and go become a llama farmer or a sheep farmer like specifically a farmer of like sheep or llamas or some kind of animal so yeah but these days we all know that even even if you go and move to a cabin in the middle of the woods you're going to have technology of some kind most likely so it's too late. As the power cables will be, you don't want that. All right, so. What are we up to today? Uh, I think we're continuing. It's been it's been a few days, uh, but I think we're continuing that article on uh, writing the article on um, connecting to uh, a Redis and a um, Postgres database at the same time in an Axum application. <laughs> Eat, code, sleep, repeat. Yeah, something like that, except without the. Uh, uh, it's it's just like the movie. That was um, that movie was like initially initially like labeled something like that, right? But then they changed it to be something more more uh, confusing, like not direct. Um, I don't remember what the new name of the movie is. I liked it though, but it was very similar to that. It was like, okay, we're going to get up, we're going to we're gonna eat, code, sleep, die, and then be reborn to. Uh, do it all again, the, the same day, over and over and over again. Edge of Tomorrow, that's what they renamed it to. Yeah, Live, Die, Repeat. That's what I'm thinking of. Live, Die, Repeat. I really like the name Live, Die, Repeat more. And then they named renamed it to Edge of Tomorrow. And I was so confused. I was like, oh man, this movie looks very similar to that other one. Uh, but I liked it, so let's watch this one. It's like, oh, it's the same. It's the same movie. Um. Okay. So, I'm. I feel like I'm really loud right now. I. Oh, I know why. Because I. I uh, have. Uh, someone seen Tenet. I don't think I've seen Tenet. Okay, my output in there. Let me set you back to defaults. Okay, how's how's this sounding? 
this doesn't look like I'm peeking into the red anymore. I dropped it down by 10 decibels. Yeah, so I didn't, I've never seen Tenet, so I can't, uh, I can't help there. I could add it to my watch list, but I'm very, very, very slow on watching anything these days. Uh, all right, so. You went to the cinema and accidentally saw Tenet instead. I could see how one might be confused. Most of the internet gets it wrong and it drives you mad. Um, interesting. Yeah, I don't even, I, I didn't even realize that Tenet was a movie that, uh, that could be seen. So I, that, I guess just shows how, how out of the loop in movies I am these days. Um, how was my day? Oh yeah. Uh, so I took the, the two days off, right? So, uh, the first day, so Tuesday, uh, I went to two events. So, um, I guess like as a, as a quick sort of introduction to, um, here in Denver, we have a Denver startup week it happens once per year. It's a big week long conference that sort of spread out all across downtown Denver. Uh, a bunch of companies sort of open up and volunteer their, their spots. Um, a bunch of companies sort of like, um, uh, pay for like food and drinks and all sorts of other stuff. There's like a party every night. It's if you're ever looking to network with other, I wouldn't say technologists because it really is startup. You're going to get a lot more C like founders, CEOs. Uh, you're going to get a lot of salespeople a lot of um, marketing people, uh, some some programmers who think that there's going to be a lot of sessions about programming, but there 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 never are. Oh, you made that up, is it? So you just got mad at the misuse of tenant tenant. Got it. That went right over my head. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so Denver Startup Week is is good for networking and for like finding play like, you know, different people. Uh, so there's two events that I went to on Tuesday. Uh, the first was a uh, it's called the CTO lunch. Uh, so I basically went and hung out with a bunch of CTOs and people who want to hang out with CTOs. And it was so loud inside that my watch warned me that I had hit the uh, dangerous decibel amount of sound. That's pretty loud. <laughs> you haven't got the hang of this internet thing, you'd think you need an emoji to make it clear. Also, I am fairly like not good at detecting anything other than just, oh, that's that's just what you're saying on the internet. So, well, actually not even just the internet. So I, I don't get that in person either. Uh, so like sometimes I get it. Oftentimes it's just like, oh, you're being, oh, wait, no, you're not. So that's, that, that, that's the thing. Um, let's see. So anyways, that was fun. I met a few people. Uh, I met some people that are doing education type startups. Uh, somebody tried to recruit me to be a CTO, uh, for a company. Um, I am working on, I'm going to be working on the Brooks builds thing though. So I, uh, I politely declined on, on that, but, um, you know, if this never works out, I could go back and, uh, try to like, you know, get a CTO position or, or C level position. Um, C CTO. So now having worked as like in, in, um, close with C level, uh, people in a, in a company and like helping to build out companies and seeing that, unfortunately the CTO is the most fired C level. Actually, I think it's the most fired position, at least in America, possibly, 
possibly, you know, Europe too. It um it's it's really kind of sad that the CTO is going to be your your our biggest allies in the C-suite, but at the same time, they're going to be blamed for everything that goes wrong even if it's not their fault. So it's it's one of those things where the CTO is either going to be someone who's like understands that and then is really good because they understand like, hey, I'm going to be fired most likely, so I'm just going to do what I can while I'm still working here. Or they're going to be scared and defend their position as much as possible to last as long as possible. And if you get the latter there, then you're going to end up uh, with somebody who is not going to defend you. They might throw other people under the bus. It will not be uh, a good thing. It really opened up my eyes to why some CTOs are not helping their their people um, and why some are. Like why you get like this dichotomy of like amazing CTOs or just like terrible CTOs, but very few like, eh, they're just okay CTOs. It's also the reason why you see CTOs trying to get out of the T and move into something else like uh, OO, the Chief Operations Officer. See the difference? I can't get into a company. In your case, companies can't get you. I mean, yeah, it, it can be like that. If you go out and you start um, networking like like crazy, uh, you'll get people who are like, hey, I want to hire you. Um, now, whether or not I would pass any of the interviews to get hired, that's a different question. But on the other side, um, it's really hard to validate a management position or a leadership position. So oftentimes, uh, especially with small, like super small startups, it could just be a conversation for like a C-level. And then the lower down you get, the more intense the interviews become where it's like, okay, um, I, you know, I need, I need so, like, you know, a team lead for like this programming thing. Okay. Well, we're going to have to make you do like a programming challenge. We're going to have to make you all do all these things. And then it just like, it sucks. Um, and it's kind of ironic, uh, when you think about that. Um, and that's not a good, I don't think that's a good thing. I think, I think it should be harder to get a job the higher up you go, but it, um, I mean, it's like, I'm not talking about places like Google, in which case they are going to be hard no matter what position you're getting into. Uh, I'm thinking more of like these startups, startups generally tend to, uh, not know much about leadership. And so therefore they don't know how to interview at all. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so that was, that was Tuesday afternoon. For, for me, Google is a day bread. I don't think I would be able to get into Google. I don't have like, uh, uh, they, they, they need specific things and I, I take too long, uh, inner interview type situations. So I'm, I'm really good when I'm in my element, like here, uh, or like my day job type thing. But uh, in interview situations, I am not a very good interviewer. I pretty I suck at that pretty, pretty badly. Uh, and I'm not very good at challenge type things. Um, we we should probably do that a few times. And then you'll see you'll see what I mean. I'm 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 pretty bad at like figuring out logic stuff on the fly. Uh, I can do it over time. But Maybe, maybe um, I, I usually like pairing and team building is, is more of my specialty and making sure that, uh, and like actually just like doing work over, you know, over time without, without the stress. That'd be a catching video on YouTube. I don't know. I don't know. There are a lot of other people do that too. So I don't know how, how catching that would be, but uh there's a there's a couple choices there for us. We could either I could either do the actual challenges. Um, I really don't like the lead code stuff. Um, so for me, it'd be more of like, OK, well, let's do let's do like the the programming game challenges. 
there's actually games in which you program to uh to play that would be to me that's a lot more fun so like that would be the things like scrapes uh we've done that a few times um i'm not very good at that i i don't think i've ever gotten like high positions on those those uh let's see there there's some other ones too there was one that i remember vaguely that you build an operating system uh as part of the game i don't know if i own it or if i just saw it so i'll have to go and look for that to see because that might be a fun one to do of course it's not going to be like none of them are going to be in rust so they're all going to be like an assembly or something or like something else that we that we work in um all right so yeah the cto lunch i uh, did that met a met a bunch of people that was interesting uh then that night was the only developer so focused thing the develop happy hour which is which is also super fun but again it was super crowded and uh just like to go inside was really loud so i spent out like i spent most of the time outside uh hanging out with people who were escaping the inside so i met i met somebody who is a, a product manager um works at xbox uh i met somebody who let's see i met a bunch of like my old my old contacts that i've i've met and worked with throughout the years um and uh, just sort of catching up with a lot of people and then um to the yesterday's i went to a session in the morning on uh, linkedin how to how to basically to uh, how to basically set up your linkedin to like be really 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 good and so she was super adamant that you don't use any bots uh that it's all personal and basically it was all like how the linkedin algorithm works and what you what you can do for that and the biggest lesson that i think is um like probably one of the bigger takeaways from it is you should configure your linkedin based upon the status that you're in so if you're searching for a job your linkedin should basically be a giant resume but if you're not searching for a job, your LinkedIn should like you should reconfigure everything to uh, help you do whatever you want to do in, in life or in your job or, or something else. So in, in some cases, uh, you might want to be saying like if you're if you're a um, freelancer, for example, then the entire thing is like selling how like how you learn stuff to be able to sell your freelance skills now. Um, which I thought was like, oh man, this is like that, that makes a lot of sense. So I think I'm going to like do that with my LinkedIn. Um, it's, it's going to probably take me a little while to figure everything out, but, um, it's like things, things to look into. Uh, all right. So that is our that that was my my days then i just spent time working and uh, catching up with some other friends that caught me on the street so um let's go find let's rename this we're gonna do this uh as the redis plus postgres Yes, I know. I have to tab. Oh, right. It's in two writing. This one. This is what we're working on. And I will I will try to like uh, make a note to find uh, one of those one of those game things. We can maybe do that. Um, I'm not opposed to like doing some like warming up uh, things. Um, I'm going to have, I'm going to play around with my schedule starting next week because like this week's been weird with Denver startup week next week. I'll have some time to like, really think about what my schedule should be. Uh, and then I might do some afternoon streams. I might do some like morning streams where we're like, you know, we just like play some programming games or do something like that and then do more work in the afternoon. I might do the opposite. I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. Um, Afternoon streams would be nice because that means that I would be able to um, hit, uh, you know, make make a bigger time for like people over here in America, because right now it's like a good time for, you know, 
people not in America. Unless you wake up really early, like Stacking and I do. Uh, okay. So last thing we had here was what is Postgres? Uh, Postgres, one of the most popular SQL databases, it's open source is completely free to self host and many hosting systems include an instance of Postgres for free or a small charge. If you have Docker installed, we can set up a Postgres instance locally with the command Docker run name Postgres dev. Okay, so we do that. Please note that if our container gets restarted, the data will be gone forever. There is a way to persist data in Docker database containers using the Docker volume, but that's outside the scope of this lesson. Okay. Um, so we've we've launched both the okay, we have both these and we launched them. Uh, okay, connecting to Redis and Axum. So Um, I'm Sylvie, did you just move your butt closer to the camera? I'm going to change his camera angle. Maybe it'll be a bit better for him. There, that might be better. Cat knows what he's doing. Cats know exactly what they're doing when it comes to cameras. That's very true. Uh, okay, connecting to Redis and Axum. Uh, let's see. We're going to start with a, um, a sort of like a hello world. Like, uh, we're gonna start with a, um, a template app. Um, Basic um, Axum application. Uh, I guess like we're going to start with an Axum uh, template defined at. Uh, Unreal Reality is hello. Good morning. Uh, you're surprised you don't need a decoy keyboard. The cats always want to sit on keyboards. You put an extra on your desk. So, so when I got, when I switched back to um, mechanical keyboards that like have actual raised keys, uh, Zilby stopped getting interested in in the keys. I used to have so upstairs. I have. Um, I have like one of those flat Apple keyboards and then I have one of the I have another flat sort of like wireless keyboard that I got from um I don't know something Logitech I think and Zilby would like you start typing those he's like I am lying down on that on top of your hands um uh he didn't want to lie underneath my hands and have me like tap on him as if I'm using a keyboard he just wanted to be on top of my hands uh and but now he doesn't like these keys. I, I guess like they're too raised up for him, or maybe they like move down when he steps on them, and so he avoids them if he can. So that's not I, I think that's a win for me. It basically means I get more mechanical keyboards and it's actually a, a necessity. Um yeah, like just check out check out some of the mechanical keyboards. They might not like the sound or the feel of them. Um but then, of course, cats are different, right? So your cat might love it, and then it won't matter. Uh, okay, so I'm going to start. Uh, we're going to start with an Axum template defined at. Um, I guess we're going to. Go find where my template is.
have a template. There it is. Axum API template. So we'll start from this. Uh, Kukma, hello, good morning. Uh, yesterday you learned to create error in Postgres with update by ID logic. Uh, so you update table set something equals test where ID equals one with uh, PLP GSQL um, and only syntax. Problem was if ID does not exist, it returns okay. Does CRM, I, you know, I don't know. Um, that's a, so I'm not familiar with PLP GSQL syntax. The, um, we can take a look. So what is this? This is a C or M PLP GSQL. Like that's tutorials. I don't see any things here that might like show off that it's going to work that. It's a PostgreSQL extension syntax. Hmm. Okay. So CRM Postgres extension extension syntax. I'm not seeing anything for this. Just Google. Okay. Yeah. Then we'll switch that to PLP G SQL. Yeah. So this is what a procedural programming language supported by SQL. So, oh, you know what? I bet that I bet that CRM will not support this because it's too specific to Postgres. And it's a language that would be really hard for them to do because the entire point of the entire point of my of CRM or any ORM really is that you write it in its own language. So in this case, Rust, and it translates that into the DDL or the SQL state like language, and then sort of does does that for you. This is probably too specific for that, but this is for let's see. Is, is this for creating extensions or is this for, is this an extension that gives you the ability to do it? Oh, you write this query SQL X, it works just fine. Interesting. Then never mind. I don't know. Uh, so I don't know if it would, I couldn't see like SQL saying that it knows this, but we can go, let's go take a look at um, CRM's. website see if they have like a language let's see postgres well i guess i could search for yes what was it it's um, PLP. Okay, yeah. So they don't, they don't specifically know about that. Uh, much more abilities than normal SQL Postgres syntax, like custom errors on Postgres side. Interesting. 
I haven't, yeah, I've never played with anything outside of just normal SQL with databases. Uh, like there's, let's see, those are all in writing tests. I wonder if like you could do errors this way, but like you're always going to be able to do some kind of raw thing. Because I believe you can always write raw SQL. And then obviously that's going to work because it's just raw SQL. But then again, there's no point then to using an ORM if you're going to just use raw SQL the entire time. So it, it sounds to me like SQLX might have a better uh, support here. Let's see, on this page, no, doesn't have PLP. Uh, maybe docs, they have something? That's, that's what PLP gives me, so probably not that. Uh, Andrew, hello, good morning. How are you doing today? You just uh, try to find out how to make update by ID, return error if ID does not exist, and find this. Uh, oh, okay. So you, you're able to... So PLP, it's, uh, it's technically, it's PLP uh, GSQL. So GSQL. Uh, and it's a custom language that you can use to write queries with um, uh, in Postgres with like, but it's more of like a language than like, so it's, it's, um, you can set like your own return types, your own errors and your own other stuff. And it's a lot more, um, expressive, uh, than what you normally get with just SQL. But like trying to find out if it's, if you can use it in, in CRM or apparently you can do it in SQL X, uh, I guess like I would need an example of like how it's used. So I haven't used SQL X at all. Uh, my understanding is that you're writing your you're writing everything in code, right? I guess I need to go back and look at the examples, not the documentation. It's a pain, but it's worth it. You think? It might be. It might be something interesting to look into, because uh, I hadn't really heard of it before. But that uh, it could be. It could be good to add into the, uh, into the ability. Okay, so here's here's some example stuff. So we can say, okay, SQL X query as, uh, bind fetch one. So yeah, you're basically turning. You're writing your entire query as uh rust code and then it's um it's basically converting this into the appropriate type of sql to then run uh how would you write the plp g sql in here then just inside the query Oh, so it's basically raw. You're just doing it as raw SQL then. Okay. Yeah, in that case, in that case, the um you can do that with the raw SQL from 
uh, CRM too. Cause you'll be able to say like, okay, uh, do this thing. And like, just here's the raw SQL statement and you can use like anything, as long as the database can run it, it's going to be happy with that. So like in that case, absolutely. You can do that from, from, uh, CRM. If however, you're going to do that for everything, then I probably wouldn't recommend the overhead that you're going to get from CRM because you're not using most of like the value of it. Uh, probably something like SQL X would be better. Compile time query check does not work with dynamic parameters. Uh, so yeah, if you're having to change things around. I guess you're creating a you're creating a string essentially. Of of the query of the query. I don't know. That's a that's a good question, but I'm not I'm I'm I don't think I'm I'm a very good person to to answer that because I don't have experience with like using using PLPG SQL. Uh there I wonder if they have a Discord. That might be a good place to ask. Uh see if they like if anybody else has heard of it that are working on 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 CRM and like if they are then uh maybe they can like see is it on a roadmap maybe it is supported and we just don't know how to use it um i do know that there's like discoverability problems where it's like you can do these things in in the language but it's really easy to um act you know to not know how to find it so maybe maybe i guess the end result is i don't think i can help beyond like, oh yeah, I can find it in a database. Just saying what, SQL X having more possibilities than CRM right now? Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, I need to try SQL X, but it, it does feel like SQL X has been growing in leaps and bounds in, uh, in abilities recently. And that makes it a very, um, a very interesting technology to, uh, to be using. And SQL X has been, uh, sorry, CORM has been pretty slow in updating right now. Uh, I don't know if that means they're going to have like a gigantic update come out pretty soon, or if it's just like they're, they're slowing down. Um, but I'm not, I'm not in any of the, um, the discords for CORM. So I, I'm not, don't have like a finger on a pulse of the project. All right, um, let's get this. We're going to um, grab you, copy you. Sure, I guess I'll do that. From within a terminal, I'm in a terminal. Oh, right. I forget. They make you display. Okay. So three. Okay. Did I, did I agree?
let's see. Uh, I want to I'm gonna do a cargo temp. Uh, I'm gonna go for that one. Okay, we're good to go here. Okay, so we have this set up. Uh, do I have my um, do I have my Docker things running? So if I would do Docker PS, oh, none of you are running. So let's do a Docker. Um, Okay, so I have Postgres Dev and I have Redis, and I think I can just start them. So I can do Docker start. Oh, I don't have I don't have autocomplete set up for this. Okay, Docker start Postgres Dev. Docker start Redis. Okay, so you're up. Uh, you're running, you're exposed on ports, and so you're you're ready to go. Okay. Uh, so if I want a connection to, so I probably want to do like a connection to Redis. Um, let's do a connection to Redis, and we'll we'll figure out how how that's gonna work. Um, I kind of want to create a different. Um, a different module for this almost. No, not window full screen that. Uh, so here in this, let's do a cargo new, make it a library and you're gonna be a, um, I guess like red, Redis connect. I don't wanna call it Redis, I guess I could. But okay, you create that, uh, which means we need to go to Cargo Tamil. We need to make you a workspace. I think it's just workspace like that, right? And we're gonna do members, equals and array, and then uh, this will be Redis. Wait, is it as 1D? Oh. It's easier for me to just remove. Redis connect. We'll do a um, cargo new library. Here, I'll just call it Redis like that. It'll be it'll be fine. Redis like that, and we're gonna dependencies. Redis equals path uh, equals. Redis. Okay, so that should be happy, I think. Uh, so if I head back over to like main, for example, I saw a flash of red for a second, but it went away and it still seems to be loading. Maybe. I mean, it's not saying that it's crashing. So that's a, okay, yeah, we got, we got types here. So that's good. Uh, so that means I can head over to Redis Live and we can do our connection stuff in here. So uh, we can have something like, um, we have a connect. Uh, I need to go look at, um, 
what can I use to connect to Redis here? Uh, do any of you have any crates that are uh, what we would suggest? Well, there's a Redis driver for Rust. That's that's a little bit popular. A Wazi Redis driver for Rust. That's interesting. An ORM for Redis. I'm going to go with that top one. That seems that seems like the way to go. It's a high level Redis library for us. It provides convenient access. OK, so that's good. Uh, the crate is called Redis. You can depend on it via cargo. Well, OK, so already like, yeah, the crate is called Redis. The, and I named my thing Redis. That's that's going to be a problem. It doesn't like it when you do that. Uh, so I need to change things around so I can. Um, you can move Redis to uh, Redis, like, I don't know. I guess, like, um, connect Redis, like, I guess the Redis connect, DB Redis. It's not mine. I'll go back to Redis connect there. Uh, We have to open up cargo.toml. Get Redis Connect. You're going to be. OK. So that should make you happy. Uh, and then then I can now come down here. Uh, we'll CD into Redis Connect and we'll do a cargo add Redis. Uh, looks like they have a lot of um, features here. Including Tokyo, so we probably want that for the. We probably want that for the async. Well, let's see what they have in their their docs here. Uh, to open a connection, you need to create to create a client and then fetch a connection from it. In the future, there'll be a connection pool for those currently each. Okay, so each each connection is separate and not. Pooled. So if I want to be able to do multiple things at the same time, uh, I need to create a pool. OK, so I need to create a Wait, am I going to have to open up a new connection every time I want to use this because it's not a pool? To enable asynchronous clients, enable the relevant feature in your cargo tunnel, Tokyo comp for Tokyo users or async standard for async standard users. Okay, so for Tokyo, Tokyo, Tokyo compatibility, that's what it's, that's what it's for. R2D2 feature. What's R2D2? I, I remember knowing that at some point in time, and now I forget it. Oh, there's that feature. I don't know what is there. I don't know what it is, though. Uh, 
Um, let's take a look at. Okay, so we have a we have a link to a. A generic connection pool. You've never used it before. Ooh, interesting. A generic connection pool for Rust. Um, opening new database connection every time one is needed is both inefficient and can lead to resource exhaustion. Absolutely. It's an agnostic to the connection type is managing, but it looks like it will be able to run with Redis. Yeah, use the R2. Oh, okay. So let's definitely use this. Uh, Xanax, welcome back. Yeah, the entire point that I want to do is I want to have two different connection pools and throw that into the Axum state. Okay, so it's agnostic thing. Uh, let's see. So I want to use R2D2. So I want R2D2, and then I also want a Tokyo comp. Okay, so we're going to create a attribute oh so they they created these somewhere else Huh, I wonder where I would put the I, I think I would put this in mine, right? So I would create okay, so I need to create a, a pool. So we're gonna come up to here and we're gonna say give me so a pub most likely async. Uh async connect. Oh BB8 is the async version of R2 D2. Oh, is BB, wait, do you have a BB-8? If it doesn't support it though, that, that won't be, that won't help. A full featured connection pool designed for asynchronous connections originally based on R2D2. So maybe uh Oh, there's an adapter crate. Uh we're 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 starting to go down a um a path here. Okay, so then I need so if I to do this, I need this crate. A full feature Tokyo is cool like RTD2. So I need this one instead. I add in R2D2, so it's compatible with that, but it doesn't realize it's actually be used in BB8. Redis. Uh did I hear about Go routines? You didn't get you didn't get it. Something like Go is only one where you don't have to mention async await. Um, isn't everything like async in in Go and sort of like automatically does routines? I don't I don't know. Like I haven't programmed in Go, uh, and so like don't really I'm not really aware of how you do async await or not async await type programming in it. I do I do remember lots of people have said that it's really easy to do async type code in Go. 
and that that's one of the, like the positives of it. But uh, you know, I have unfortunately I haven't heard of it. I haven't really been paying attention. I haven't gone out of my way to to listen for, to listen for it. Okay, so I want uh, connect. JSON syntax is not, oh, I forgot function. It would help. You won't mention that Deadpool also has its own adapter. You would stick with BB-8 uh, as opposed to BB-8 Redis. as opposed to Deadpool Redis. Wait, but there's BB-8 Redis. BB-8 Redis is fine, right? I would, I would imagine so. Uh, okay, so in our connect, I want to I want to connect to the database, uh, so we can do this with I believe where's my Redis here. There was there was a time when everyone was creating their own database pool. Yeah, the time when like none of them existed so everybody started creating their own yeah that sounds that sounds right okay so we can do let client okay so redis client open and then we give it we give it the path so we'll do let so we do redis equal so in this case it could be let's say redis client equals you can get it from redis Yes. Okay. Risk client. I mean, I totally get you're looking for. Okay, let's restart the LSP. Are uh, you check the BB eight Redis stocks? Okay. Well, I figured I would I would use the Redis to get a connection open to Redis first, uh, and then and then we'll go to these docs and jump in there. Even though there's no README, it might be just this README. Uh, but okay, so are you running? Client open. Yeah. Redis. Uh, what port are you in? You're on port uh, 6379. Oh, can't save file, parent directory. Oh no. Uh, okay, so hold on. I changed, I forgot that I changed the names of everything and that that freaked everything out, I bet. I'm... There. How about you? Are you happier with this? Yeah, okay, there we go. So you're... Let's just go ahead and unwrap. You'll be fine. 
can possibly go wrong with that? Uh, okay, so that we have a clan now. Now, from the clan, we can get a connection. So we can get an async connection. Interesting. So we can get connection, we can get an async connection, we can get a Tokyo connection, which is the same docs. Okay, so that gives us a connection. Now we need to go to the BB-8 Redis and it's supposed to be very similar to this one here. So we can uh, BB-8 Redis Pool Builder, okay. So BB-8 Redis Oh, it this comes with a Redis client library already in here. Interesting. So I could potentially just use this. The actual doc show so what to do better than that generic example. Okay. Let's jump in there. The actual docs don't even have anything in it, which is nice. Well, what do you know? Okay. I see, okay, so none of this, we wanna get rid of all of you and do this all again. So we're gonna start with, we're gonna create a manager using the Redis connection manager. Okay, so let Redis manager equals Redis connection manager. It's gonna be just a new, right? New. Uh, which is Redis uh, two, and that is six three seven nine. I guess then we unwrap that. Okay, so that gives me a new manager. Uh, then we can create a pool. So a Redis pool is going to be, then we use, uh, interesting, so this is going to use BB-8, not, oh, but you get it from, okay, you can get BB-8 from BB-8 Redis, and then we do a builder from that. Okay, so, and let uh, Redis pool equals BB-8, BB-8 Redis, BB-8, uh, Pool, so that's where we get pool. Uh, builder. Then, okay, we that creates a new one that we can write dot build. We throw in the Redis manager here. And we will await unwrap. Okay, so now I have a pool. Um, all right, so you have handles here. We have a loop. Uh, so we want to clone the pool so we can use it. Handles push, we can spawn to this thing. Async move, okay. I don't think we need to do, I don't know about the Tokyo spawn or What's the handles thing? Uh, 
join all handles. Oh, so that's just literally, so I don't actually know if we're going to need to do any of that stuff because we're going to be already in an async await system inside of Axum. So I bet we'll just be able to do straight to this. Okay, so then this is going to return our connection pool out here. And then I can do a, um, a pub async uh, function. Let's do like a set. Um, let's just say like our key is going to be a, um, a stir. And we need a we need a pool. Um, we need a pool, which is going to be that. Okay, so can I do that type here? Uh, and then I want to run a query. So if I want to set something, so we want a key. We kind of need a key and a value, don't we? <laughs> that would kind of be important. So I have a key and a value. Uh, let's just make these all stirs for right now. Um, okay, so then I want to do a command and the command comes from that What else can I do with that? Maybe, maybe there's, um, so Redis. Uh, Supercuber, hello, good morning. How are you doing today? Uh, Zilby says hello as well. Call, get on the pool to get a connection and see what methods. Uh, yeah, we could do that. Let's, um, let's, uh, we have something equals uh redis pool oh it would be a pool in this case so pool get a pulled connection okay So we have I uh, increment something range zev rank add multiple those are all snippet stuff I don't think that's helpful Oh, I see some gets. I don't see any imports. Uh, 2056. Hello. Good morning. How are you doing today? And then back to snippets. Okay. So I see a bunch of gets. I don't see any. Yeah. I don't see any sets. That feels weird, doesn't it? Uh, is it because this isn't like mutable? That doesn't make any sense.
may maybe it does set sets the value sets the string value of a key okay am i insane was that not there until i added the the mute um but okay i put the key put the value in here uh you're going we're going to wait and unwrap because oh we're going to wait Oh, type inside of it. Function body must be known in this context. Cannot infer type for parameter RV. Okay, so set. Oh, we need key, key value RV. RV is from Redis value. Oh, I forget. Um, I forget the key to like, wait, is there even a scroll down? There might not be a scroll down in this. Rust analyzer is being too clever. It does feel like that, doesn't it? I, I wish that it would have said like set here. Can't use this without the thing being mutable. That would have been nice. Uh, but okay. I want to set. Let's go find, let's go find set. You don't exist because it's not inside of you that I'm getting. Okay, so it's re-export out of Redis, which is the Redis that I had previously brought in. Okay, so it is that one. So we want to set. It's probably that one. There's that RV. Well, that's not really helpful. Okay, do you have... Redis RS exposes two API levels, a low and a high level part. The high level part does not expose all the functionality of Redis and might take some liberties, okay. Executing low level commands. Okay, so I could do something like command set key. So I can do a builder like that. High level commands. Oh, okay. Well, that seems easier. Uh, stacking, <laughs> do what you guys remember. Also, uh, good morning. Oh, yes, the song. Oh, it is the 21st of September. It's like, yeah, my 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 sense of, day, of time, like, I'm like, I guess it's coming up soon, right? Uh, it's like, no, no, today is the 21st. Uh, yep, and I see you you posted the song in uh, in in um, Discord, too. So perfect. I can't play it on stream. I It will probably get muted and or claimed. Um, okay, so I need I need some set where I can just do the two things, right? So this is the wrong set. I want to do So I want some other so pulled connection. Is there multiple sets here that I could do? Wait, is there like get mute? Oh, there's get owned. Okay, so it wants me to do get, so I get that. 
uh, I do a dot set key value, and then you're super. Oh no, you're happy. Okay. Are you happy? I see. I see this uh, not finishing with um, Rust Analyzer yet, so it makes me makes me concerned that it's not actually happy. No, totally not happy. Type inside of async function body must be known in this context. Cannot infer type for parameter RV declared on the method set. So, um, if I just take this connection pool, I don't think I can use this, right? I can't just do like Redis pool dot set, right? So I have to. Okay, so if I do something like set A, and you will be a bunch of A. Type annotations needed cannot satisfy unknown from Redis value. The following types implement Boolean, I size, I8, I16, I32, so numbers, and 42 others. Do you have to be a string and not a stir? No, it's not that. Make both key and value. Oh, yeah, we could try that. Will be okay. He's uh, he's dreaming. I just heard a little bit of growl from him. So hopefully it's not a nightmare. Okay, so it doesn't like that either. Type annotations needed, but where? Cannot satisfied Redis from Redis. So Now, interesting, so this is a pooled connection. And this one here is a connection. Uh, maybe, maybe that's the problem is I don't want this gets a pooled connection. What are my choices? That results in a pulled connection. Is there, is there like another, oh, there's just those two, but they're both pulled connections. Hmm. 
If I wait and unwrap you, does that make you happier? Oh! Okay, cool. So I just needed an await and unwrap. That was a bad error for that. Okay, cool. So wait, no, never never mind. Uh type inside of async function body. Okay, so let's try it. If I do let uh let's try let that type that equals to you. I, I think I do need to hint the return value, yeah. It's okay, that that worked. So if I re enable you, let's just get rid of you and we will grab you out, put you in here, you go away, uh, and so you say, okay, we have a pool which is this we is now not a, a this is a um uh this is a connection pool or what was it is a pool of some kind a pooled connection uh What type would go in it? Now, now I'm... Oh, interesting, okay. So it's... So it's gonna be a pooled connection. With unknown or just like unknown or whatever and then a redis connection manager yeah i want it to be a connection of some kind because the pool will be dropped so if i do that i get i can get the pooled connection at this point uh and then we pass you in here uh but Oh, you're right. I probably do want it to be a, I probably want it to be a clone to the pool, don't I? So you're right. I probably do want this to be a pool itself. So a pool. Redis connection manager. And then I would then create. Okay. So then this comes from you. Uh, and said so rest pool, we're going to do a pool, get, okay, so we do all that stuff and you're happy now. You can't return to pooled connection because the pool will be dropped, right? Yes, the pool will be dropped, but the idea is that I can clone the pool uh, when I'm passing it in here. So it looks like I'm taking ownership of a pool, but really I'm cloning a pool, then it gets that out and then does the thing. That's That's the idea. Uh, unknown, uh, oh, unknown. Oh no. Uh, why did that link get caught? Um, sorry about that. Uh, unreal, unreal realities. Users. Oh, is it a? Is it a? Um, this is one of the. Oh, uh, I should I should enable this. This is one of the um, forums for Rust, and it's one of their official ones, so it should be moderated. It should be fairly safe for me to uh, enable whitelist this. Let me go ahead and do that really quickly. Okay, that's added to the list. Um, 
uh unreal reality sorry about that if you try to paste that again or anything else from users.rustlang.org it should it should be happy with that now uh is there a way to return the connection don't create a reference in the first place um perfect yeah uh perhaps yes i see you need to store the connection somewhere nope not that's already big enough this one uh so you need to store it in a struct so yeah you have my pool your pool like this and then don't we clone the pool then do stuff with right yeah you have verified that this works uh yeah 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 that's this is what i'm guessing yeah the, there's no need to clone at this point to rename it like just name yeah that it yeah, there's no need to do this. We're we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. So, uh, in our connection now, I want to return out of here a um, Redis connection. So this is, we're gonna return a pool. So let's actually create a type alias here. So we're gonna have type uh, Redis pool is going to be a pool uh, Redis connection manager like that. And now, now here, this can now just be a Redis pool to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. And then you will also be a Redis pool. Uh, so you're upset. Um, I just don't create this as a variable. Um, and we do that. Now in a real program, we would absolutely want to use results and do that. But this is sort of like a experiment and not really the focus of what we're going for. Okay. Um, then you, we're going to take you and we want to switch you away to use the key and the value. Are you happy with that? You are happy with that. Cool. So then, okay. So we have connect and we have set set up. So we can go back to our main library. Uh, I need a state. So let's actually create a new. Uh, you can't find app state. Why not? App state's right here. What did I do wrong? Did I, oh, did I not put you? Oh, I put it outside of source. That's, that's my problem. Okay. There you go. App state, you're now help, uh, happy. So we want to do a uh, pub struct. We have our app state. All right, so we're going to start with. Did I not move? Did I? <laughs> did, I did I fail to do that? Uh, I did V. <laughs> 
All right, app state to source, then app state. That should do it. Okay. Uh, all right, so we need um, our Redis connection pool. So our pub Redis, um, and you're going to be a... Redis pool. Ooh, can you find it? Oh, you can't find it. Um, okay. So I have Redis connect here. Uh, that gives me the path to Redis connect with members and errors. That should be fine. Uh, so instead of here, can I use Redis Connect? Oh, 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 I know what the problem is. I need to make you public. Now I bet. There we go. Now I can import it. Okay. So we have Redis Connect, that's in here, that's added in uh, for the struct. Uh, I want to... derive clone, debug, and uh, from ref. From ref. So now we can extract the Redis directly using the state. Okay, great. Uh, then we're going to go into our routes. With state, oh, I need to... State will be an app state. Okay, so we'll throw in there, and then I need to go into the lib. And we need to create the state. Uh, here's fine. Um, we are going to maybe maybe right up here. To Redis Connect. Uh, and then connect, and then you're fine because you can't possibly have any problems. Um, yeah, you'll you'll never have a problem ever. Redis, and then you are the um, oh, you're just that. Okay, so you're happy. Uh, oh, you do need to be up here. Um, so we need you to here. Take in our app state, we'll pass you in. You're happy. Okay, okay. So let's create a route handler. We need to sort put this into source uh, routes. Um, and then inside of here, we'll do like, you know, I don't know, save to Redis. Redis. Um, can I, oh, there's no like rename. Is there a move? I already don't like this name. Uh, let's buffer close that. Ooh, um, I'm in Redis Connect, that's why. Uh, so I'm gonna go to source, routes, okay. I don't like save to Redis. I, I kind of wanted to like just, um, 
I, I want something for like the dealing with the databases, but this could be something generic that will work with both the Postgres one and the Res one because I want something to store like to use both. I want to save in like both at the same time. So like it won't be a mirrored. Maybe it'll be like um, I don't know. Save it. Save it. Address. Okay, so here's save it. Uh, mod you. Uh, you didn't need to be public, but whatever. Okay, so we'll do public uh, async function. Async 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 function. Uh, save to uh, save save it all. I'll just do save it. Uh. We'll do nothing there for a second. I will head back to our uh, not library, our routes, and then we'll do a new. Yeah, you don't have to be that. Use save it, save it. Okay, so we're going to do a dot route save it uh we could probably do a post i mean it's i can be lazy if i don't do a post but we'll do a post uh we'll do a post axum routing post is that right yeah it is right uh post and save it Okay, uh, which then means uh, insomnia. We should now be able to set you to be a post to localhost save it. Uh, we got an error. Um, probably because I need to restart the server. Okay, so we, we cargo watch run that. Right, you're running. There we go, 200, okay. Then, up here, I want to, what do I want to do? I want to um, connect in, so I want to extract out the connection. I probably want some kind of like data coming in too. So let's uh let's do that. We're going to save it. Uh we'll create like a um a quick JSON that we're gonna come in. So uh data to save. Uh, let's see. So I want um, I want some like key value, something we can store in there. Uh, let's do. I mean, I guess I'll literally just have them called pub key. Uh, this could be a string, and then uh, pub value, and that could be a string. Okay. So there we go with you, uh, which means we can now take in. All right. So I'm going to take in the JSON first, just to make sure we get it. We have to be careful with this. So JSON, uh, this is going to be our data. JSON data to save. Uh, and we are going to tracing debug the data. Oh, that's not that's not how tracing debug works. It does okay, we'll do that. That's why I put a debug in there. Okay, so we come back down to here. You should be running, and I think I have everything set up the way I want to. 
So we just run you again, but you're probably going to be 415 unsupported. Huh, media format of the requested data is not supported. Uh, I guess it's because I didn't send anything at all in. So I need to send in a body, JSON. So we have a key um, that can be a uh, hello and a key. Did I call it value? New world. There we go. Key, hello, value world. So I've got that. Excellent. Forward progress. Uh, now I want to extract out that state. Uh, it has to come before JSON. So we're going to do a state. Uh, this is going to be the Redis connection. Uh, so it's going to be a state of a Redis. Uh, Redis pool. Yeah. Okay, so I've got that. So I'm gonna get rid of our tracing thing. I want to at this point um pull out oh we just call that other function. So we're just gonna call the save function, right? So um do a redis connect set. Uh we have our data dot key our data dot value and uh, our redis and we clone you um rush uh rush on raja uh sorry if i mispronounced your name uh, you have a question you saw, I did an import using some key bind. Was it through code actions? You're trying to learn, learn Vim. So I guess this, this is, um, Helix. It's very, it's like similar to Vim, uh, but there's some key differences. So obviously also with Vim, your keyboard shortcuts are going to be your own. So, uh, when I was pulling in a uh, serialize and deserialize. So if I, for example, remove these. Um, I have rust analyzer set up where it will auto, I guess like it's a combination of rust analyzer and it's also a combination of the editor itself. Uh, it sort of detects, oh, look, there's serialized there. I can just hit down arrow and return and it adds that in. And then for this other one that's already in there, I have a code action set up to space a for me, um, in like vs code by default it's command or control dot and then uh for vim it's whatever you've got it set up to be i think in the past i've set it up to something like leader dot or something like that it just it should just work and and bring it in there oh i pronounced it correctly awesome unfortunately i forgot exactly how i pronounced it so next time i may i may get it wrong uh, but yeah, that that it's a really really awesome um, feature, and I I like it a lot. Okay, so we're just gonna do that, and that that should set it. So if I run this again. Uh-oh, that should not take that long to set a simple hello world inside of um, Redis. Hi, Zobie, everything okay? Yeah, okay, so we've got a 30 second timeout here. So uh, do I have, okay, are there any logs? 
Um, panic called at uh, result unwrap on an error value timed out. Okay, well, that's my thing. Hmm. So in Redis connect source lib line 18. Oh, right here. So when I'm getting the connection, that failed. This this timed out. Yeah, because I, if I I could do something like I don't have tracing in here. Um, get I could get tracing in here. Um, how is the Docker image set up? That's uh, fairly, fairly basically. Um, we can take a look here. I use Docker, Docker run uh, this to set up Redis. So, um, and port mapping. That should be available to me. Uh, uh, Banzi, hello, good morning. Uh, you think the cat needs coffee? Um, oh, he stood up. Yeah, he, he's been sleeping. He played a little bit this morning and then then it's like okay i'm i'm sleepy tired now uh so yeah i have no idea okay you know what maybe you can do a docker logs uh redis Ready to accept connections. Is there a default password? But even if the password was not set up. That should be an immediate fail, right? Not a not a just sit there and wait for everything. I think the port might not be mapped. Um, do I have? Telnet. I don't have Telnet. You can show the a my my age by like Telnet is the first command I'm thinking of to test whether or not the port is open for me. <laughs> um, I forget all the new the new the new hip commands that all the sysadmins nowadays use. Um, it should be netcat. Okay. Let me try, let me try that. It's been forever since I've, who are the times? I know. I know, I know, I'm sorry. Uh, Netcat, what's the options here? It's Netcat. Um, specify address and port or specify port. Uh, so like Netcat. Um, the future is now, old man. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know there's all these cool tools. Uh, okay, so there's, uh, I could do x localhost uh, colon 
I forget what the port was. Um, here, let me try one that doesn't exist. Uh, oh, I'll do 3000. That's not running right now. But, okay, that's not, that's an error. That's not a usage. Wait, this is going to watch it, right? I don't want to watch it. I just want to look to see if it's open. Okay, so the man page. I just want using dash dash network host option with Docker run will allow container to use host network. It's always worked for me in the past though. It's always worked in with me in the past. So I um I want to prove to chat that the port that Docker says is open is actually open. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to prove. Uh, also, good morning, Stark. Um, how are you doing today? The cat is judging you. The cat, yeah. I mean, it's a cat. Its job is to judge. Uh, 4 p.m. for you. Well, I mean, yeah, true. It's... I don't need to prove anything. I need to prove it to myself. Um, but yeah, no, like it's usually when I do this, I, I guess I could open up Docker desktop and ah, no, don't need that. Um, Docker desktop containers. You're running. Oh, can that show me the ports that are open? I so very rarely use Docker, like the the actual GUI. There's a lot of stuff in here. It doesn't really tell me anything. Oh, I can show the logs in here. Is there is there anything on here that is bad? I'm not seeing anything right now. You didn't know there was a GUI for Docker until earlier this year. That tells me you're a Linux user. Um, put you in, coach. Um, all right. Here's here's our problem. When I attempted to run this uh, this code, uh, we get a this this line right here. We believe. So yeah, let me. We believe that this line um, uh, fails to like finish running. So we think it times out. So finished. So here, let me, um, let's, uh, okay, we update that. If I do another cargo watch, um, Okay, the server's running. Uh, Ninjatron, uh, hello, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for the raid. Uh, I'm kind of surprised my um, Twitch, Twitch alerts didn't go off with that. Or maybe it didn't, I just didn't notice it. Uh, but welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, how was your stream? What were we working on today? Um, okay. Oh, there it is. Oh, weird. It, two raids. The second one worked. Uh, but Ninja, how was your how was your stream? What were we working on today?
And uh, yes, Banzi, uh, or sorry, uh, Rasha Ranja, um, Rasha Raha, uh, there is a, um, in Mac and in Windows, you have to use the GUI uh, for the virtual, the, the virtual um, system to work. Otherwise, it just doesn't work at all. Uh, on Linux, you can use the Linux system behind the scenes. You don't need a virtual manager sort of like running another Linux container or something behind the scenes for it. So you're kind of forced on Linux and Windows to use the GUI. And Linux, you don't need to at all. I don't even know if there is one. You're working on a Go client for network UPS tools. Oh, that sounds fun. Uh, Sounds like it sounds interesting and like actually useful. Uh, <laughs> also, welcome Alceus. Uh, Alceus. Uh, good. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, awesome to have you here. Um, and uh, again, uh, thank you for the, the raid. We are working on um, experimenting with connecting to uh, Redis and Postgres at the same time in the single web server. We do a lot of Rust here. So the web server in question is Axum, uh, which is a new web. Uh, if you're familiar with like the Rust ecosystem, it's fairly new and it's uh, it's pretty interesting. Well, it it's frozen. Um, so I get, I get this thing. So I get a debug message. Uh, we're starting to set the values. So looking at that, okay. So I get the starting to set values, but then it times out before this happens. So my pull get is not super happy. And I don't know why. Um, If I get a connection, would I get something in the logs for, so I have, I have the logs for Docker Redis over here. So I can actually see if something happens. I, I didn't see anything saying that there was a connection happened. I would imagine that if the port isn't opened that I would get an immediate, like does not work. So it, I think it's attempting to connect and then something is going on there. Chat feels that it might be a port problem with Docker. Uh, um, so we have Redis up. We have this running on the 6379. Now is there, I can create another, I don't want to do it with Docker uh, to debug. Let's go to let's go to Docker Hub. Okay, so I can use the Redis CLI and attempt to connect in. Is there a like a default password or username or something else that I'm missing? Uh, not much information in here. Uh, did I do? Yeah, I did. So I will show the command. So here is Docker. No, I didn't. Oh, well, that, that would do it. <laughs> okay. Docker, stop. Docker removed Redis. P 
Uh, let's do six, three, seven, nine. Six, three, seven, nine. Okay. Uh, I noticed that we're going to have the same exact problem with Postgres. That's going to be fun. Yeah, this is what I'm... Okay, I completely forgot that this is the symbol we're supposed to be looking for. The little arrow. Uh, that sh that should have told me that, like, yeah, the port is open and available inside of the container, but not on the host system. So, chat, you were right. Uh, it, You were absolutely right. It wasn't uh, connected to the host. The, the arrows behind the cat... Ah. Cats are like that. Let's see, can I? Oh, I can't zoom up enough. Um, I can. I can go like. Ooh, I can go like this. Kind of. There we go. Okay, now you're up and running. Let's uh, let's see if this is happier now. So if I. Just come back to here. Uh, let's also open up you and everything else. I want to open up the logs for you over here. Okay. Oh, that was really fast. Okay, so we got started finished. Um, I don't see anything in uh, the command line over here. Uh, is there a way for me to pop this out? That would be really cool or like to full screen it or, or something. I don't think so. I can open up a terminal inside of here. Um, Open container and external terminal. Well, that literally opens up. Okay, this opens up iTerm here. Uh, and chat was right. You were looking for an arrow and couldn't find it. Yeah, well, yeah that was that was it. Uh, all right, so I'm inside of here. I can do a it's been forever since I've done Redis CLI. Uh, how do I? How do I just do a simple query in here? Uh, ooh. Um, it's not like, oh, Redis CLI localhost. Can I do a get, get uh, hello? Yeah, there it goes. Okay, get hello, and then we have a world. So if I want to do another set, and we change this from hello world to hello world, like maybe bang, bang, bang. There we go. Okay, so I am successfully connecting to and uh, getting getting all that. Good. Um, if I wanted to do a get out of here, I don't really think it would be that big of a deal. Uh, we could probably do pub async function get. We'll do a key. Uh, we'll do the pool. Uh, I don't need this tracing stuff anymore. Okay, so let um. Connection equals pool dot get await and unwrap because that's the cool thing to do. Ooh, but you uh you only get strings back. That's that's all you get back. Um I guess technically this is probably gonna be an option. Uh, so then we can do a connection, get a key. I get, we pass in the key, we await, and then you're, 
Interesting. Okay, so oh, it gives me an a result. Huh. So they chose that if it doesn't find it, it's a result. Interesting. If I do that, it's still not going to be, uh, cannot, oh, it still needs to be, still needs to be mutable. Okay. Um, oh, your get does return an option. Okay. Never mind. Then we're, we're happy. Or at least it figures out what it's supposed to be. Uh, all right, so if I do a get now, let's, um, let's head back over to save it. Save it will have the really great also thing of pub async function get it. Uh, we need that. Uh, we need the key. People's lack of understanding of what's an error and what's not is as old as time. I know it. It's it's sort of strange where it feels like why why is that? Like I get there's a result, but shouldn't it be a result option and then the generic. But it, I, I don't know. I'm 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 now confused about what I'm gonna get back. And that is that is a strange feeling to have in a strongly typed language. Usually you don't have that. Okay, so we have save it. Um, we have get it. I need I need a key. Uh, we can put the key in. I guess it's gonna be at the query parameter, isn't it? So pub struct get it query, which is gonna have a pub um, key. Is a string. Okay, uh, so we'll have a query param. Uh, that would be our query. Your type is query. Get query. Uh, we also have to get the state out. So get the Redis pull out. Uh, we can return. Uh, we can return a string. We can turn an option string. Um, let's not worry about the return right this second. And then we will. We'll just trace. We could tracing log this. So, I guess first off, let's just tracing log. The query uh just to make sure i've got that set up right we know we have oh you're right it's um gonna be that okay so you're happy get it add you in here so get it uh this is gonna be a get i uh, get it Okay, did I not pull in get? I did not. Okay. Zilby, you done? Okay, Zilby's, Zilby's done hanging out. Uh, all right, so I do that, I can now get it. Um, let's see, I um, don't want this one, I want that one. You failed to compile. Um, that's not cool. Yeah, that's a lot of errors. Uh, all right, so this function takes two arguments. Wait, 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 wait. 
I got the wrong get. I got the wrong get. I want Axum routing get. That, there you go. That That's much happier. Okay, so I want to do a get to the same place. Uh, we're going to have a query parameter of hello. Whoa, it does not like to be scrunched down like this. Um, why can't I? There you go. Uh, so you're going to be key and hello. If I send you method not allowed, I get, oh, because it's get it. Um, huh, I did it to get it. Or if, oh, get, get, underscore it. There we go, okay. Uh, so we see, okay, so here it is, get it query, key, hello, perfect. Uh, this time we can come back to here, go to route, save it, get it. All right, so we want our result is going to be equal to, um, Redis connect, get, um, we'll have the query key and we'll have that pool and we'll clone you. No, it's redis.clone. Okay, uh, we'll await. And that supposedly gives us an option. Uh, so let's, um, let's trace and log this. Um, debug? Yeah, I can debug out an option. Okay. Let's see if that's any happier. And, okay, yeah, I got some world. Perfect. Now, I'm really curious. What if I say, hey, give me key, hello, like that. I get, oh, I get a nun. Okay, so... That is interesting. Uh, it actually knows what to do there in that case. What if I were to tell it that you're not getting an option, you're just getting a string? Because like you think you're okay. Everything compiles. Uh, I want hello, you get a full error back. Response type not string. Is there... ah, it's a runtime error. Response was of incompatible type. Response was nil. Was nil. I'm really surprised that they didn't include like an option on a get for that. Every database or database like thing that that like every interface has like an option usually except this one. Um, OK, well, apparently if I do an option that I basically I have to tell them, hey, this might not exist. Uh, but OK, I'm able to get it and I'm able to set it. Perfect. So that is, uh, that is Redis. So uh, for, for everybody who's joined, uh, we've been doing this in order to write an article on like how to actually connect to both Redis and Postgres at the same time in Axum. And potentially in like the same route handler, then sort of like do that. So we've been just connecting to Redis. So we're gonna start. So, all right, uh, now we're back to the article writing. Uh, we're going to start with an Axum template. Um, Axum template. Uh, uh, 
we start with an axum template and uh, connect to Redis. Um, we'll uh, put um, uh, it can be nice to use a sub uh, a work workspace like a sub crate sub module like um what's the right word for for the, the like a workspace member like a work i guess like a workspace um we're going to use another crate so uh, we're going to put okay and be nice to separate out uh the database uh logic um and uh, logic into its own crate um so we'll um be running we'll be creating one called um redis connect uh we need something after the Redis since we're going to be using the um Ooh, I probably don't actually need the Redis. Uh I guess like we're gonna use something after Redis since uh there is a Redis um crate. And we don't want to uh, confuse um, this for that. Okay, so uh, from the root of the project, run. Uh, this is not Rust, this is shell. Is it shell? Is it more like CSH? All right, so then down here. And so for any of you who are wondering like when I'm like doing, like changing the entire screens around, I have Zellage up and running and I'm in full screen mode, but this is what this is what everything sort of looks like in general. Uh, so my, my article's over here on the left and my code and a little terminal, a little tiny terminal for me to run stuff in is down here. Uh, so that's why I've been in full screen mode so I can actually see what I'm doing in inside of at least the terminal. Um, okay, so I want, what do I want out of here? I want the, I want the command I used to create. So we do the cargo new. We'll do that one. Okay, so cargo new lib redis connect. Um, uh, we'll need to update the cargo.toml file. Okay, so I'll just throw this entire thing in there. Okay, so it's that. Um, now uh, we can, okay, now we can uh, set up the new Redis connect create to um, connect to Redis. Uh, and create a couple of, um, I guess like a, a getter and setter, a, a get and set um, function, functions. 
um more like get create get and set functions um uh through to store and retrieve um data from the uh store from the reddit store uh twisted seed hello how are you doing today All right, so um, we can set up that um, for this example. Oh, we're putting everything into uh, the into the um, Redis. The I guess this is going to be uh, Redis. Connect live.rs file. Uh, not bad. Excellent. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Had a couple nice days where I we weren't streaming, but out like actually visiting people and being social. But at the same time, it's nice to be back and hanging out here again and with like, you know, an actual normal day to day schedule. Uh, rest. All right, so now we're going to go to our live. Uh, is there anything we want to update here? Uh, yes, so you're upset about that. Save to Redis. We can just close that. Okay, so you're good. All right, so we will need we'll need some of things before we before we run into here. Okay, so now we can set up the new risk created and create get so and retrieve for the example putting everything to the store. Um, we'll need to install to add some crates to um, uh, Redis connect uh, in order to connect uh, to Redis and um, uh, create a database pool. Um, uh, as of the writing of this article, um, we aren't aware of any Redis specific um, uh, pools. So we're using a, um, a generic, uh, a generic pool called BB-8 Redis. Which unfortunately BB-8 Redis like has, has Redis, BB-8, Has nothing in the README, so that's not going to be helpful. So BB at Redis, um, which is based on BB8, uh, where Uh, BB8 is where we'll be. Oh, actually, no, it which is okay. So, just just that. And I think that um, I I want to say, and we should double check this. 
if I go into you cargo tomahawk, if I remove this red S, how upset are you? Method not found. Um, okay, so pretty pretty upset so far. Uh, I was using Redis like that, but is there? Import Redis. Uh, oh, I need to. Um, LSP restart every time I do that. Uh, Stephen, hello. How are you doing today? Uh, did I know that 50% of Americans 18 to 29 still live at their parents' home? Uh, I did not know that it was, uh, it was that. I mean, it makes more sense. There's, it's, um, it's a weird economy right now. Uh, college is like in, insanely expensive, and uh, with like with uh, uh, work, with work being sort of weird as it is, it makes a lot of sense. There we go. I want to import from you, and then you work. Okay. That's what it is. So then you should still you should still do the thing. So I should still be able to get to get it. And I do. We get the nun. Perfect. So you okay, so we need to import those. Okay, so we import you. Um after importing, uh, well, wait, wait, there's features. There was features. There's not features. Okay, so just BB-8 Redis, and I don't need tracing really. So we can remove that too. BB-8 Redis, so. Uh, we could do a, this is going to be a cargo add BB-8 Redis. You will own nothing and be happy. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's even more, it's even more sad when we, when we add in the, the idea that like what we do own is often not ours because we own a license to use something, not actually the thing. And that's becoming more and more of the norm. Um, all right. Oh, I just remembered my new my new meeting starts at nine, doesn't it? I was previously ending my streams at much closer to nine than that. So I need to I need to be aware of that. Uh so let's uh let's finish up this one section and then we'll probably end it. Um okay, so cargo had BB8 Redis. Uh, okay, so then um, now we can uh, create a pool and connect to it in the, um, so this is going to be the, in the uh, live address, in the Redis connect. Uh, it is currently 8.36 a.m., 8.37 right now, a.m. And that's why I tell everybody good morning, because clearly it's morning. I mean, if it's morning here, it's probably morning everywhere, right? What are time zones? Uh, now I can create a pool. It is early. Yeah, I start I start the stream at six. So you can imagine you can imagine what that's like. Um, but I want I want to be able to get this stuff like to actually work on this stuff and um Next week I'll be probably experimenting with some times because uh being contract 
part-time for the day job does mean I have more time. But this week has taken it easy in the afternoon. Uh, okay, now we can create a pool and connect it to it in the Redis Connect RS. Uh, RS. Um, so let's be Rust. Not that. I wanted to go over here. Okay, so here we can just grab you. Uh, so let's actually grab this stuff. Okay, so what what of these do we really need? So we have pool, so I need pool. Um, I don't at this point in time need the async commands. Uh, and I need the Redis connection manager. So I think I need these two things. Uh, I'm creating a pub type for that. Okay, so. Yeah, the timing is the hard part and like for me, I um, this is coming from a book called Deep Work, which I haven't read, but I've heard a lot about, which is like, make sure that if you want to get something done, you do it or you do it first thing in the morning. So that's what this is, is like I want to because I noticed that if I wait until after work, I won't get it done sometimes. And so that's why I started with I've been doing morning streams for years now, and it's just a lot easier. Um. Devs boss, hello, welcome. Uh, uh, well, thank you so much, Devs boss. How is the game going? Um, how is every uh, how's your stream? How's the game going? Uh, and uh, everybody else who came in with the raid, how are you doing today? Dino cries, hello, welcome. Uh, all going well, but you're already toast. Got to get some rest. Totally understand. Uh, have a great rest of your day uh, when, you know, however much that is. Um, I don't have a Kickstarter necessarily. It's more of um, I'm sort of preparing for a, uh, a course that I'm going to give. Um, uh, so like writing articles, creating lessons. Uh, this is like, for example, is one we're doing here about like how to connect to Redis and Postgres in the same uh, Axum uh, server. Uh, which, um, based upon the axiom, we're doing a lot of rest type stuff. Uh, so, uh, I mean, we're getting, I'm getting more and more people asking when it's going to be available. So that's a good sign. Um, I'm, uh, also going to, uh, I'm also going, um, part time with my day job, which means I get more time to work on this. Um, and also not like completely lack of money for, <laughs> so I get, I get a lot long, longer runway to work on this too. So I'm I'm happy about that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much how it's going. We're about halfway through, I think, maybe almost halfway through creating articles uh, and lessons, and so it should be it should be good. Um, and uh, let's see. So what what we are working on for this sort of like kind of mentioned it. Um, will this be on YouTube? So all of the vods that i'm doing for the streams are going on to youtube uh then for the actual like course itself i have an lms that we created previously the course and the articles are going to go inside of there so the my idea for this is free tier is either watching here live on stream or perusing through youtube to like to extract out the lessons and articles from from like the actual vods um the uh then like there's gonna be various paid tiers for like okay you can just do it on your own and then like the um what in business what's called the um uh oh it's like the they they always use war terminology um the something front the where's the front where you're like landing the ships on the beachfront uh the beachfront uh, will be the like the live course and that's where I'll say like okay a small group of people. Uh, it's like first off, I'll probably do like five at most. And then eventually it might be able to get up to like 12 and it'll be like, okay, we're going to sit down and it's going to be like several weeks. Uh, you'll pay like the largest amount of money, but you'll have like, you know, you'll have me every day. Uh, we'll be doing lessons. 
um, we'll be like going through. And then by the end of it, you'll really know and understand this. Um, and then everywhere in between, you can like, okay, I want to buy access to this, but not have like the live lessons. Uh, so that's, that's the plan. And it'll be cheaper for like, if you're buying, like, for example, if you want to buy just like this one article, that would be really cheap. Um, and then, but if you want to like buy an entire Axum course, that'll be a little bit more expensive. I haven't figured out the pricing yet. I've been looking around at like what some of the competitors in this space are charging. And that um, it's really interesting for the live courses. Uh, the most expensive one in the competitor pool is $600 US. Uh, and um, the cheapest one is like $400 US. Uh, so probably the end result is going to be somewhere in there. And then the first one that I'm going to do is going to be heavily discounted. So I'm thinking right now, $100 and it will be for like Axum, um, which is why I'm building so much stuff out there. I want there to be enough value that somebody thinks that $100 is, is enough for that. And then, um, for the like individual little pieces of courses, that's a little bit harder because I only see like bigger courses being sold, not little tiny chopped up versions of them. So I might go like most people do a subscription model. So if I'm not doing that, I have no clue yet. I need to do more market research. Uh, Democrats, you just found out what Axum is. Uh, not that I don't expect there'll be a web framework for us, but why? There's actually several web frameworks for us. Um, I mean, so like number one reason is you can use Rust, right? So if you love Rust and you want to use a web framework on it, now you now there is. Um, I think the other choice, the other reasons are uh, it is a replacement. If you were going to use something like C++ for a web framework um, and you are concerned about like you want to, but you want to use like a language that's more memory safe instead of C++, this gives you an option. And also Axum is quite possibly one of the fastest frameworks out there right now, but it is in beta. So it's a little bit harder. Oh, that was my, that was my alarm telling me that uh, I have a, a stand up soon and I need to switch over from working on this to working on uh, day job stuff. Um, but that's in 15 minutes. So I've got, I've got a little tiny bit of time. Uh, but yeah, it's so like the, the why is usually either I want to use Rust or I want to be as fast as possible and use and use a memory safe language. Like it's, it's those sort of like two things. Sometimes it's both together because there are other memory safe languages too um, that also run really fast. So uh, does that, does it answer the question? I hope it does. Um, because we're running out of time here, I didn't get a chance to sort of finish this. So I'm going to go ahead and close you off. I need to keep this around. So I'm going to quit out of you and we're going to remove that to delete. So that way, when I close this, it keeps it keeps this, which is which is nice. Uh, all right, so we have that. Let's take a look here. Uh, we are sort of like we're um, creating the Redis uh, the Redis connection, and I can go ahead and push that article up. Uh, these articles are all sort of kind of private repo right now, so they're not they're not visible. Um, but let's see, everything is good there. You can use Erlang, Pascal, whatever, but commercially why as a hobby and for fun, yes, as a business, maybe as microservices with exposed API. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, it's either, it's, it's probably gonna be more like microservices or small web servers, uh, especially if you wanna run a web server on, where it doesn't have to be a web server. Axum can also handle any kind of thing that like does type of server type stuff. I've been hearing people of using like gRPC on it too. Um, but if you want something running like on an IOT device, uh, you want to use as little memory and as little CPU as possible, uh, but then still have like decent speeds. Axum could definitely be that choice for you there. 
Um, and you certainly wouldn't want to like pull out something really, really big and heavy for IoT. That would be, I mean, you could, you could do that, but I don't know if it's a good idea. Or it certainly means you're going to have to pay more for the IoT device itself. All right, let's see. Um, I'm not following anybody who's online right now. And I don't see anybody else doing web server stuff. At least on my list. So I think I'll just go ahead and uh, end the stream. Um, and then um, everybody, uh, we uh, let's see, I will be back here tomorrow morning uh, at around 6 a.m. Mountain Time. And then I go around, I think I'll probably be ending around 830 tomorrow instead of 845 uh, because I just need that extra half an hour before the day job stand up is nice to sort of like get myself mentally prepared and, and ready for that. Uh, so that's going to be the plan tomorrow. And then, um, I don't stream on a weekend. So I'll then you'll be back again on mon Monday next week. Although next week is going to be a little bit interesting. I don't know exactly what the plan, the, the stream is, the stream plans are yet. I'll have to figure that out. I do have a discord uh, in case you all want to join that. Um, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be um, uh, putting my schedule out on Discord for next week whenever uh, when I figure that out. So with that, uh, everybody have a great rest of your Thursday and uh, I will see you all online next time. Bye.